Sunday morning. I'm getting kind of a late start. It's like 10 10. I would actually stay here longer just because it was so nice in bed, but uh, I don't have any cell service and I want to send a couple of texts to some people. But when I woke up, you couldn't even see that water right there. It was so cloudy. And even now you can see the haze that's over everything. And the bridge you could just start seeing over the last uh, 20 minutes or so. So uh, I want to hit even a visitor center if I can. I think there's one upcoming and uh, see if there's anything there about the, the area and try to get some information. So other than that, I'm just going to, you know, go till I find another spot and hopefully I can find something early and chill out while this uh, weather's hanging around here and then also check and see how long this is going to be here but um, I've already looked at the weather for the next uh, few areas and it, it looks like it's cloudy all the way to Yukon for the next few days so I'll have to double check that today hopefully that's not the case but so that's it I'm just gonna keep going All right, so I didn't make it very far before I stopped, and I actually stopped at the uh, visitor center, which is right there, and they gave me a lot of useful information. I got a bunch of maps um, from here all the way up to the Northwest Territories, and also into Alaska, so that was pretty cool. Um, very helpful, very friendly, and they had a museum right downstairs about the uh, geological history of Canada talking about the glaciers and how this area was formed in other parts of Canada as well as some dinosaur exhibits because uh, apparently one of the largest dinosaur beds is here in this area but they also had a Sasquatch Museum which I think I showed or will show a short clip on um, about stories of Sasquatch in this area and other parts of Canada but Right now I'm heading to a museum that has uh, some historical history of Grand Prairie with some really old buildings, so I figured I'd check that out. And the sun came out. It's still pretty cloudy, uh, but it's still the, not a bad day to go check something like that out. And then there's a casino in the area that has free horse racing that you can go watch. Uh, but with that, and what piqued my interest was that they have a bunch of vendors with everything bacon um, desserts treats uh, all sorts of stuff so uh, and they said it's uh, really cheap to buy each individual item so i'm gonna go check that out as well um but i don't think i'm gonna make it out of here today to be honest i think uh, my whole rest of my day is going to be here in grand prairie uh, which is cool because this is what i wanted to do i didn't want to just blow by everything and not check things out i want to you know, spend time in Canada, learn about some of the history, and just check out, uh, you know, what they have to offer. All right, so if you're ever in Grand Prairie, you have to check out this museum if you're into museums. It is super cool. They've got all these buildings out here. A lot of them um, are from uh, when they were actually built. A couple of them are actually uh, not just restorations, but full on rebuilds. But the history is cool. The way they've decorated it to be of the time is really awesome. They've got these old uh, cars back here and vehicles. Uh, inside is just a ton of information, not just about um, the pioneering days, but you know, up into more recent times. And uh, I mean, just really cool information. I wish I had hours and hours to go through here, and it kind of sucks that I have to blow through it because I have other things I want to do today. But if you're in the area, take the time to come here, it's free. So, this is a threshing caboose, and it housed quite a few people actually, but the way they decorated this is really neat. The table there with uh, all the containers and 
different condiments and then those two bunks each bunk held three people so uh, tight quarters for sure and uh, just the way they had the stove set up I could definitely live in this thing I live in my Jeep but man this would be I could live out the rest of my life in this thing not with everybody else but by myself or with my girlfriend absolutely and here's a ice house which is pretty neat because they show how they filled the walls with sawdust and then inside they've made it how it would look and then you've got you know the made up ice there got a nice saw up there and uh, where they kept their fruits and vegetables and meats since it was cool but again really nicely decorated So this building here was a cabin and they converted it into a blacksmith shop. But if you ever want to see a real blacksmith in action, and he just makes little trinkets for people, but if you're ever in Asheville, North Carolina, and you pay the fee to go into the Biltmore, um, it is worth checking out the blacksmith shop there. Very nice guy, works there daily, does a lot of the work inside the Biltmore, and uh, worth checking out. But, Again, I just the detail and all the stuff that's in these buildings is just incredible. And then they even have these sounds in the background as you walk in of uh, what's going on. So this outpost is the only building in Alberta to have been used as a fur trading post and the oldest building in the South Peast River County. So this was taken apart log by log and piece by piece from its last location and brought here. So it's uh, mostly the original building. It had to be restored because it was vandalized, but they use it as a, a training room. But it's got uh, cool exhibits in it again and was a trading post for fur. And that sounds actually something that's generated. That's not me walking on the boards. But look, even in here, they have all these animal hides, all labeled so you know what they are. And, uh, you know, different things that they would have sold. Moccasins, lamps. There's even a grizzly bear hide. But really neat that they restored this and brought it here and... People like me can check it out. So here's an old chuck wagon. Sleigh. And then there's another one back there. And yet another one. Early snowmobile. That's cool. School caboose. So this was used also to deliver milk, but that there is a stove to keep the occupants warm. an old tractor and a couple of Model T's and a Model A and then you've got some fire engine equipment here and a really old threshing machine and another one even older how complicated that thing is cleaning plant I'm gonna walk back through here show a couple of more buildings 
and uh, go through the inside on the other side. This building was built in the 1930s and it houses some old carriages, early 1900s. And then this one here is from the early 1900s as well. And then just animals thrown in for good measure to show uh, what the barn might have looked like. like. Branding irons hanging. And uh, chicken coop, some rabbits. This particular building, this guy was in operation from the 40s to like 1969. So it's just uh, what the inside of his taxi service looked like. And then back there's a bedroom that you can walk around to. This building was built in 1935 or 36 and eventually used as a post office and a store. But this one is really neat on the inside, the way it was decorated. So you've got all your store items, and fabric, and all sorts of things that somebody might need in a small area. And then back here, got your kitchen setup, living room, and back there's a sitting area, I know, but I'm just and, saying. and then back here is that room from the taxi service. So here's an old school, grades one through eight. And it's built quite a while ago. Closed in 1956 and it was moved in 1928. Up there it says Hermit Lake School, 1917. levels of education. When you get close in here you can actually hear the sound of chalkboard writing. I actually remember that from school. I guess a lot of kids don't hear that anymore. And stove right in the middle to keep everybody warm. And that sound brings back a lot of memories. I haven't heard that sound. So this one here is built in 1934. It's a post office. Got a bunch of old stamps, mail up in the bins, and typewriter. Just uh various information to read. And then here, you have the living quarters. It said on the board that they made $35 a year as a postmaster, or I guess it's called a postmaster. There you go. One of the first street signs in Grand Prairie. And then here is the back of the postmaster's office. Back in there's bedroom, sewing area, kitchen. Again, it's just it's so cool how they decorated all these homes. It really makes you feel like you're walking into somebody's home while they're living in it. Just really, really well done.
All right, so I just left the Bacon Festival, which happened to be at a racetrack. And it was 12 stations and people serving different things with bacon. I ended up getting a couple of skewers. One was uh, sirloin wrapped in bacon with like this coffee sauce on it. And then another one was uh, uh, Asian pork, which was basically like the, the fat back of bacon. And that um, it was a little bit too fatty for my taste, but it looked pretty good, so I tried it. And then also I had a brownie with bacon on top of it, and that was actually pretty good. But my favorite was uh, they had a Bloody Mary, which they called a Caesar, and it was made with this Lucky sauce. That's um, It looks like it's from Canada, but I'm not sure where, and that was actually really good. It was simple uh, Bloody Mary with Clamato juice, Tabasco, and then this Lucky Sauce and some pepper, and it was actually really delicious and kind of refreshing. So I'm going to have to check that out. But something different to do in the area rather than just, uh, again, pass through. Um, got to see a couple of horse races, which I've never really seen before. I might have seen them a really long time ago, but nothing recently. And uh, so it's just like a local racetrack. So decent experience they had some music playing in the background but it actually wasn't all that busy so more people were there for the racetrack betting than i think they were for the bacon festival but still cool nonetheless and now i'm going to go check out the badlands of this area and apparently i drove right by them on the way in here um, to uh, grand, grand prairie so i'm going to backtrack a little bit check those out i think with all this daylight i might try to get outside of town and find something maybe 100 or 120 miles out of here. So we'll see how it goes. Alright, so I tried the uh, Badlands and it ended up being, I didn't expect a whole lot being out in this area in the Grand Prairie area, um, but it just ended up being uh, some mounds of dirt basically uh, out in like a country field area so it does kind of stand out, but the elevation is, I don't know, not really, just not that high, they're basically hills. Um, and you could walk through them it looked like, but when I got out to walk near uh, all the old buildings uh, at the entrance, um, the mosquitoes were so bad I just decided not to do it. Um, I, it was worth a shot. I'm glad I you know, at least gave it a, a try. But uh, now I'm going to head out. It's only um, 5.30. I've got plenty of daylight. I'm going to try not to stay in a parking lot. So there is a spot that's really going to be iffy that I found about two, two and a half hours from here. So I'm going to try that out. If I don't hit that, then I'll just motor on through and just stay at a visitor center or a rest stop or something like that. But I at least want to try staying somewhere different. But uh, So that's the plan. Um, finished up Grand Prairie a little bit uh, earlier than I thought I would. I, I wish I would have spent more time at the museum had I known, but uh, it's the way things work. I'm glad I did spend the day here. It was still interesting and uh, definitely recommend it to anybody that's uh, passing through. So on to the next spot and put a couple of more hundred miles behind me, hopefully, or at least a hundred and something uh, before I stop for the day. So the start of the Alaska Highway, and the signs used to say something, but uh, it has been plastered. Thank you. 
So on my way to a Walmart parking lot, I found this spot. So I'm just gonna set up here now that I got the Jeep where I want it. It's pretty level actually where I'm at. So it's gonna work out quite nice. And it is starting to get chilly. It's only 8.30 here, but uh, I just changed time zones. So it's actually like 9.30 for me. <laughs> but I'm only a few miles out of St. John's I think it's called so I am going to get set up here and settle in for the night I think I have cell phone reception so I can reach out to some people and check on a few things but that view is uh, that's gonna be great tomorrow morning all right so since there really aren't any mosquitoes out here, which I'm really surprised about, it's pretty dense brush here, and uh, I mean, the river's pretty far away if that's what I see down there. But uh, I thought it'd be a nice night. It's nice and cool to actually make something to eat outside the cab like I was doing with my girlfriend. I really enjoyed doing that. I just, uh, it's not the same when you're doing it alone. So um, I usually just eat inside my cab. Um, mostly just because of the bugs, I don't feel like dealing with that. And it's just easier to eat in there once I uh, organize it to sleep in. But So tonight I've got, uh, well, that's in French, but it's creamy Thai chicken and rice. So I'm going to make that. And then these things, um, Oasis Fruit, these were on sale for a dollar Canadian, so 75 cents a piece. And uh, looking at the ingredients, it's only fruit and vegetables with some, it's like uh, pasteurized. But it's actually really good. And I've been living on a diet for the past three days of uh, chips and more soup. So <laughs> these are probably a good addition to the body. Um, so that's actually probably a third left. I'll finish that off tonight. So today, uh, It was a pretty cool day. Um, spent some time in a town that I didn't plan on in uh, Grand Prairie. Um, cool museum. Uh, the Badlands were, uh, <laughs> I, I guess if you're into just something that's different than the land around it, then it's okay to go to, but you just can't compare it to, to the Badlands in, in the U.S. Um, but it was worth checking out. And uh, now that I'm on the Alaska Highway, I'll, I'll stay on this for a while. And then, uh, you know, eventually I'll get more out of civilization. But, um, you know, from Calgary, you're, you're never too far from really a whole lot. And uh, the gas prices have started to creep up. It was like uh, 99, 101 in Calgary. And then it was uh, 108 in uh, Grand Prairie. And now I just paid $1.20 in Dawson Creek. So it is starting to go up. It's definitely going to start to sting more. But uh, that's, that's the way it is. I knew that was going to happen. It's going to be really interesting to see what it is in Tuck. But, uh, yeah, this thing might actually be empty. This, my, this container might have actually leaked on me um, because it went a lot faster than normal. Either that or somebody returned one and I didn't pay attention. <laughs> and it was only half full when I bought it, which it wouldn't surprise me at Walmart. But it uh, looks like I might have to change out this tank if this isn't going to be warm enough. I ate cold soup yesterday, so maybe I'll just eat warm soup today, but it would lighten the load. I picked up a couple of extra propane tanks back in Calgary just because uh, you never know. Uh, it's going to be cold. I might end up busting out my 
my heater eventually and there it goes but so anyway this is uh this is it for tonight that's my view um it is pretty nice so i'm just gonna have dinner enjoy that and then crawl into the back of the cab got pretty cold last night so it's probably gonna get pretty cold tonight it makes it tough to get out of bed but I still prefer it over the heat anyway that's it for tonight talk to you later